Hey everybody, today we're debating whether or not ex-Muslims should be punished and we are starting right now. With Khalid's opening statement, Khalid is a Muslim, arguing for the affirmative. Thanks for being with us. The floor is all yours, Khalid. Okay, so I'm going to show a presentation. Uh, you can all see this, right? So this is my case for executing apostates. Part one, um, it's going to be three parts. Part one, I'm going to talk about social cohesion and what that is. So the simple reason that they're executed is because they cause the decline of social cohesion. Social cohesion is the co social bonds between people that hold society together. It's basically what society is. John Locke, he stated in his letters of toleration that civilization is built upon these social cohesions and apostasy is an antisocial rejection of these bonds. He actually recommends um, punishing them through the use of force um, via uh, public shaming. Now, if these social cohesions are um, destroyed, then society would collapse. And basically, um, this is what society would criminalize. This is what cr cr um, crimes basically are. There are things that uh, destroy social cohesions, such as stealing, adultery, etc. And if they don't do this, then their society will collapse. Um, there's an academic paper here from the University of Pennsylvania from last year about uh, Johnny Anomaly. He finds that certain values cause the decline of social cohesion and causes civilization to collapse. By one, it, um, number one, the things like um, that you deal with like freedom, equality of sexual stuff. This causes the decline of social cohesion, and number two, this low social cohesion results in low birth rates, which which lead to a population decline and eventually the collapse of the society. And these are generally what we call liberal values. Part two, what is an apostate exactly? Now, at George Mason University, they came out with a survey of apostates called the Apostate Reports. So what do they value? Well, 67% of them are liberals. As I showed before, these values destroy society and cause low social cohesion. 53% are alcoholics. 57% um, engage in adultery. 93% stated they apostate because they value these liberal values more, and this was the main primary factor for their apostasy. Now, why do they value these specific things? Well, an apostate from Society A would value the opposite of what society A values. So someone who apostates from a liberal society will become a conservative, or someone who apostates from a conservative society will take on liberal values, such as premarital sex, drug use, etc. Now, think of religion as a product of evolution. This is what atheist scientists believe. So all religious values are a product of natural selection, and basically they're values that are the best at surviving. This explains why every civilization in history independently has these exact same values. Now, apostles reject these values, and so they take on the opposite values, values that are the worst at surviving, such as, again, premarital sex and alcoholism. Now, can they have values that aren't those things? No, they can't. There's a recent paper on this. They found when secular communities, even when they understand the benefit of these values, their members refuse to practice it because um, it's not what they signed up for. And this concurs with what Locke says, that these values have no hold on them. So here are some examples of apostates. This one is uh, from Kenya, pretended to be from Somalia. They scammed the Netherlands, became a politician there. Eventually, the police exposed them and kicked them out of the country. But then they went to America to continue the scams in a new land. Here's another one. He scammed the British government by providing them fake data. Eventually, actual scientists um, debunked him. The government pulled their funding and his organization, which used to scam the government for money, shut down. This one is a dictator of Turkey. Um, he was an apostate dictator. He got rid of the Ottoman Empire, which results in the current instability in the Middle East. He was a notorious homo. He molested his best friend's son. This is in his autobiography. He even um, uh, molested their wives and so on. Now, because of the things he did, 
Turkey has one of the lowest birth rates in the Muslim world, as well as one of the highest rates of STDs. Even though he's gone, this was like 100 years ago, the stuff he did still kind of infects society today. This is another dictator. He's a dictator of Somalia. Um, under his rule, there were mass starvations, mass executions. He, uh, he implemented apostate policies to promote it. And now he destroyed one of the most um, vibrant societies. And now after he's gone, things have gotten a little bit better, but still a lot of his um, consequences are still there. This is another one. This one claimed that she was being persecuted for wanting an education. So eventually the Canadian government gave her a ticket to go to Canada. The first thing she did was do drugs, alcohol, had a kid with a random guy, abandoned the guy, then proceeded to create an OnlyFans account. She currently is not getting any education at all, despite what she said. This is another one, same one as before, another porn star. Um, I don't think I really need to point out how destructive this stuff is to society. Yes, I mean, now here's some examples of reverts. This is Bruno Gironi. He's an astrophysicist. He's an associate scientist at the ESA. He's a world-renowned expert in the theory of galaxy formation. And he's a guy who converted to Islam. This is another one. He's a Japanese professor. Another one, a mathematician. Um, this one guy is from, he's from India. He's a professor of literature. Um, uh, another scholar. And this one is um, a Taiwanese nanoscientist, na nanotechnology scientist. Um, she's a um, National Science Foundation award-winning inventor with over 180 patents. So you could kind of see the difference between the two. Um, and the um, simple reason is for this difference because the um, stuff apostates believe is that they have the freedom, freedom to form any kind of family or identify as any gender. And you're free to do anything regardless of the social consequences. By, pastor, um, by promoting um, promiscuous behavior around sex and marriage. Now, so people, there are people who value hedonistic pleasure, such as sex and drugs, above social order. They'll be attracted to liberal, liberal values and promote these things. And indeed, the stuff they do value are socially destructive. Um, this is from Patrick Dinan in his book, Why Liberalism Failed. He says he says how. Um, it promotes social destructive values, such as the replacement of modesty with um, hookup culture and the lack of um, uh, the lack of value um, when it comes to children. And this results in um, birth rate declines, which is important. I'll get to it later. Now, this is how it does not affect us. So Pierre Rostand came out with a study on demographics. And this is a demographic prediction of um, based on the birth rates they find that in European society, their society is basically collapsing due to their liberal values, and that every 100 years, their um, population will decline by half, whereas Islam will grow by half. And by the year 2020, 2200, over 50% of Europe will be Muslim. Um, this also called um, Eric Kaufman. He's another political demographer. Um, he's had similar projections about how in one, um, by the end of the century, 20% of Europe will be Muslim. And this is from Rostands on the left and um, Ron Lestjengis on the right. The dotted line is the amount of native European babies. So let's see, in 1950, there were 38 million European babies aged zero to four. Today, it's around 25-ish, 28 million. And by and next, Two centuries, it'll be all the way down to eight uh, million. Again, due to low growth rates, despite the fact that, as you can see in the pink line, the population of Europe is um, increasing, probably due to immigration. And Ron, that's the United states here that um, they, 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 um, this trend will not reverse because the quantum of fertility is too small for this. This even for the um, and the advanced stage of the gender revolution won't change this. The general revolution means um, equality between the sexes. Um, Nordic countries believe if there was more equality, the birth rates would rise, but um, empirical evidence shows this isn't true. And a similar thing is happening in the Asian countries in China, Japan, and Korea. And this is from Pew Research, um, more, more demographic statistics. It shows that 
Lithium is declining as a share of the world population, only again due to low birth rates. And the reason it does not happen for Muslims is because adherence to Islamic values means you will have above replacement of our birth rates. And apostates basically want to get rid of this. So Muslims would um, then face the exact same things Europeans who, for example, in Turkey, I showed you their birth rates were lower because of their history. And the thing is, Islam has already tried these liberal values, such as feminism, pop music, things apostates want. And this caused the collapse of Baghdad and the end of the Golden Age. Similar thing happened in the Roman Empire. Um, Roman historians talk of this. Um, back in Greece, Plato also talked about how um, the excess of liberty will cause the demand of tyranny. And other Greek playwrights like um, Aristophanes, who wrote two plays on this, um, Lysistrata and um, the Assembly one, where he basically mocks these values and say how they will destroy society. And so we have countless examples of, in history of these liberal values destroying society. Um, philosopher G.K. Chesterton basically said, um, do not remove offense unless you know what is put up there in the first place. So anti-apostate laws are therefore a reason to protect society. And this is again from Anomaly's paper that ultimately the winners in the evolutionary game of life are those who reproduce the most, not merely those who acquire the most power or resources in a particular amount of time. So it is in the best interest of Muslims to continue having anti-apostate laws and not to repeat the mistakes of liberal society or the exact same mistakes we made in the past, like such as in medieval times when we did tolerate these things. And if we tolerate apostates, then they will spread these socially destructive values in our society. Now, you might say that's our oppression or that's disgusting or whatever, but to a reckless driver, a stop sign is oppression. And these are more further readings. Like I said, on Eric Kaufman's book, Shall the Religious Inherit the Earth? It's basically the same thing. Everything I explained here, he basically explained in the book. Um, there's, um, and there's more on fertility and this fertility in Qatar, where um, despite them being rich, um, they don't have low fertility. Whereas in, the, in Europe, the explanation for low fertility is um, more wealth. But this isn't true in Qatar and the Middle East. And that's about my presentation. That's it. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening statement. And want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are thrilled to have you here. Whether you be atheist, Muslim, Christian, you name it, we're glad that you are with us. And want to remind you to hit that subscribe button as we have many juicy debates coming up. For example, Muji and <coughs> David Wood are debating who was Muhammad later this month. You don't want to miss it, so hit that subscribe button and notification bell. With that, we're going to kick it over to Apostate Prophet for his opening statement as well. Well, Apostate Prophet is an ex-Muslim, and he's arguing that ex-Muslims should not be punished. Thanks so much for being with us, Apostate Prophet, as well. The floor is all yours. Thank you so much. Uh, let me set my timer quickly. I keep forgetting that every single time. Okay, first of all, uh, I'm very sorry if, um, for everything that you have just heard. Everybody, I'm, I really truly feel bad about this. Um, many people have asked before, I've seen in the comment sections and everywhere else, how is this a debate? How could we possibly debate this? And uh, people think we shouldn't be having this debate. And I agree, we shouldn't be having this debate. Unfortunately, we have this debate and we have to have this debate. Because uh, the whole question, should apostates be executed, is often not a question among uh, the circles of people who think like uh, this guy here. They openly say that apostates should be executed, as you can see, and they do not base this on their own you know, desires and whims. They base this on their ideology, on their uh, own beliefs. Now, there's one thing that needs to be said, which is an irony that needs to be pointed out when it comes to, uh, if we want to come to, uh, you know, re relying and trusting each other and uh, being open and all that and, you know, going toward a healthier future. My opponent here, um, who calls himself Khalid and who has a picture that I don't even know if that's him, uh, agreed with me to have a uh, video conversation in the beginning. Later, he changed his mind and only wanted a voice conversation, a voice debate. So far, nobody knows what he really uh, looks like. So uh, I am debating an anonymous person who argues that people like me who voice their opinions should be executed. And he's doing this anonymously, which is very, very ironic to me. 
Now, when it comes to why uh, apostates should be executed and why uh, people like this gentleman here agree on such a thing, uh, I want to go to the sources of this very uh, quickly. Can you see my screen? Okay, fantastic. Now, um, wait a minute, which, which screen are, we, are you seeing right now? Okay, okay, that's the screen you're saying. Okay, sorry. So, um, the the order to kill apostates is directly found in the fundamental sources of Islam. For example, one of these is uh, this source in which uh, a, a person uh, converts to Islam, then re reverts back to Judaism, according to these sources. And these are accepted as extremely authentic, next to the Quran. And a Muslim then says, I will not sit down unless you kill him, as it is the verdict of Allah and his apostle, Muhammad. So this is a fundamental uh, ruling within the Islamic religion. Next, we have a source that comes directly from Muhammad's mouth, which says, The blood of a Muslim who confesses that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that I am his apostle cannot be shed except in three cases. In uh, retaliation for murder, a married person who commits illegal sexual intercourse, and the one who reverts from Islam and leaves the Muslims. So this is directly said by Muhammad himself. It comes from him. I wish our friend had explained where he gets these rulings from. That would have been more insightful. Uh, another, uh, another source that we see here is that Muhammad's very trusted man, Ali, burns some people, and he's a very beloved uh, individual, by the way, in the Muslim community, burns some people. And another then comes and says, uh, had I been in his place, I would not have burned them. As the Prophet said, don't punish anybody with Allah's punishment. Sounds good so far, right? Don't do that. No doubt I would have killed them. For the Prophet said, if somebody discards his religion, kill him. So this is a ruling that comes directly from the uh, Islamic Islamic sources. Muhammad himself commands the killing of people who uh, leave the religion and uh, embrace uh, disbelief. Now, this is a map that you can access very simply online. You just have to look for it, which is why um, it shouldn't be shocking. And this debate should contribute to uh, to make it less shocking and surprising to hear that this is actually a ruling within Islam which many Muslims agree with. This is a map that can be easily found on Wikipedia which uh, shows you apostasy laws. Now, um, what this does show is that certain apostasy laws exist in several countries. Some countries are, are shown here and listed here which do not actively execute apostates and they do not have um, you know, written laws in the modern sense which say if you leave Islam you will be executed. But what they do have is they um, have Islamic rulings within their uh, you know within their laws. They appeal to those rulings, and those rulings contain texts which say that apostates should be executed. And uh, several of these countries repeatedly appeal to those in order to threaten or to punish people who leave Islam. These uh, rulings against apostasy exist in uh, a dozen countries. More countries have rulings, uh, more countries are socially dangerous. If you leave Islam, the law may not be able to punish you because they have been westernized, gladly, but but within a society, you will be uh, under constant threat. You will be, you know, um, threatened by your family members, by relatives, by friends, and by many others. This is common Islamic practice. In fact, if you want to look at um, numbers by Pew Research uh, made in 2013, we see that uh, a large percentage of the Muslim population, which favors the Sharia, Islamic law, favors stoning for adultery. And if you look further, Many people in many Muslim countries, most of the population, in Egypt, 86% of people who uh, favor Sharia also think that people who leave Islam should be executed. So this is not a fringe opinion, not something strange that uh, some guy named uh, Khalid here simply comes up with. This is actually a very common uh, practice, a very common idea directly found in the fundamental uh, rulings of Islam. Um, let me quickly get back to my screen. Now, uh, 
our dear friend will talk a lot about why this should be done and why apostates should be executed. He will. Uh, he has already done this, and I will, of course, come to the come to the rebuttal of uh, some of the things that he said in my uh, in my rebuttal section. What he will. What he generally argues is that uh, atheism is bad for a society. Apostasy is bad for a society. People generally argue that you know leaving Islam makes societies weaker or uh, corrupts them, makes them more uh, full of harm and all that. If we look at the actual uh, statistics statistics in the world, we will see that atheism does not have a terrible impact, a destructive impact on society. Apostasy from Islam also doesn't have, an, have a destructive impact on society. Now, of course, um, according to mental health uh, professional, professionals, if you uh, leave, if, if you have trauma in your past and you escape from that trauma, it is quite normal that you have a reaction to that trauma. This, is, this has been known as uh, resentment prior to psychology in philosophy, for example, mentioned by Nietzsche and many others, by Sigmund Freud himself uh, for, for, for a long time. Uh, Islam is a very oppressive, a very authoritarian religion. If you leave this religion, it is quite natural that you have uh, trauma and a severe reaction to the abuse that you faced while you were within this religion. So after you leave it, you might be, uh, you, you might, you know, try to be as free as possible and be as resentful uh, as possible and to, you know, take a revenge and then slow you normalize. It is not true that uh, atheist societies are more destructive and more destroyed. If we want to uh, look at data that we can present directly here by appealing to, to research, we can see that um, a, a map of uh, mental health disorders, for example, uh, brought up by our friend here and by many others who argue for apostasy and against atheism, shows us that there is no significant difference between, uh, in, in terms of mental health between Muslim civilizations and non-Muslim civilizations. In fact, uh, Iran, for example, has a very high percentage of people with mental health disorders. Uh, this is a giant misunderstanding on the part of uh, Islamists and Muslims in general who think that mental health is... Uh, you know, mental health problems are a result of a bad life or something like that. It's not true. Mental health is simply health. It can go bad. It can it can go well. Depends on many different fa uh, factors. Afghanistan is a country that uh, suffers from big mental health problems. Islam doesn't have much to do with this. Many different other factors are involved in this. If we look at uh, Okay, I looked at this uh, right now. We, we can appeal to a different research in which we, uh, for example, in this in this research paper, if we dive deeper into it, uh, we see that in the Islamic society, it is very common of people to uh, associate mental health problems with uh, with the devil or with the jinns, which is why Muslims uh, frequently try to blame mental health problems and other problems on in, in, uh, invisible beings in order to explain their misery if they have have misery. Uh, so they are not aware of uh, certain mental health problems. People outside of these societies and atheist societies recognize their mental health problems and deal with them, which is why then the uh, Islamists who advocate for who advocate for Islam and against secular and atheist societies make it look like atheist societies deal more with mental health, health problems, but that is only because these societies happen to recognize their mental health problems, while the, uh, the, the Muslim community doesn't. In the Muslim community, it's very normal to say, hey, I have a problem but that has to do with jinns or you have a problem but that has to do with jinn possession now when it comes to um Violence. We have uh, statistics which show us very clearly that uh, in terms of global terrorism, the Muslim world is dominant in terms of uh, suffering from terrorism. Muslims often say the greatest victims of terrorism are Muslims themselves, but that doesn't change the fact that Muslims are also vastly engaged in terrorist activities. Uh, so, uh, so, sorry, to rephrase that, the vast majority of Muslim activities are done uh, with Islamic motivations by Muslim groups. In fact, a research uh, by uh, Davis Brown, for example, uh, on the influence of a religion on interstate armed conflict shows us that um, this should be somewhere here. 
shows us that, for example, the, the Christian religion is associated with a decrease in armed conflicts, while Buddhism shows no change, and Islam is associated with an increase in global conflicts. The references are right here on screen. This research is just one of many researches which shows directly that. Uh, just on the, off the top of my head, Robert G. Hoyland, in his book In God's Path, for example, very nicely explains that Islam hasn't been a, <laughs> a system of peace. On the contrary, Islam started out out not as a dream, but rather as a force that invades the world and massacres populations. And Muslims are proud of that in the early phases of Islam, and then imposes Islam on societies. And this uh, threat to humanity was only stopped by the expansion of Western ideas. If we look at Western ideas, in fact, to atheist uh, societies, Iceland, uh, New Zealand, Denmark, populations in which uh, secularism and atheism is very big, we see that the most peaceful countries in the world are countries that have nothing to do with Islam. So the idea that Islam would bring us peace seems very uh, seems very much baseless if we look at the statistics here. When you look at the Human Development Index, you see that, again, secular societies, Western societies, atheistic societies, uh, or, or some Asian societies are very highly ranked. You will not find a high number of Muslim societies here. On the contrary, if you go further down, you will find a lot of uh, Muslim countries, which uh, is kind of works against the whole idea that uh, Islam brings, you know, development and peace and happiness and all that. Uh, people like Khalid argue that too much freedom is bad. Here is just one example of a research which uh, debunks that whole theory and shows us that too, there is no such thing as too much freedom. Freedom is related to higher happiness in general, which is why, for example, uh, Finland is more f uh, happy than uh, France, where you have more happiness than the other country. Uh, yeah, here, here's, here's the example of, of just that, of just what I, what I just said. So more freedom, more individual rights are uh, related to more liberty. In fact, here is another research, which I just found quite recently, uh, by Damien J. Rock and uh, other researchers, which uh, shows that uh, respecting individual liberties is associated with higher GDPs, while less fewer liberties and much less respect for liberties is associated with a sharp decline in uh, productivity and in GDP, which also explains why uh, Muslim countries are very low in terms of productivity, while non-Muslim countries, liberal countries, are very high. Uh, there are many other uh, reasons why uh, I think Islam is a terrible alternative and why ex-Muslims should not be executed. But, but hey, I didn't even spend enough time here uh, going going into why ex-Muslims should not be executed, which is why I, what, what I find very funny, because our opponent here, the Islamist, also did not really explain to us why ex-Muslims should be executed. What All he did was to say ex-Muslims should be executed, and he depicted ex-Muslims as people who are emotional and who cry, and then he went into a bunch of uh, talk about why um, adultery or nudity is bad. That's just it. It's just bad. Or uh, why lower birth rates are bad, or why an unstable society, define unstable, is bad, and so on. But no explanation ever as to whether it is okay or not to execute apostates. Well, let me ask you a very simple question. If it is in the human interest to act for well-being, for your own flourishing, as found in the ideas of Aristotle for thousands of years. Do you think it is uh, better for you? Do you think you will be happier and you will find more flourishing and well-being in a society if people around you are executed for thinking freely? Or will you find more happiness if people's uh, individual liberties, including your own individual liberties and the liberties of others, are respected? Or in other words, should we normalize something like executing apostates in the West as well? Well, should we do the same thing to Muslims and people who convert to Islam? I don't think the Muslims would agree that we should do that. I don't think any of us would agree. I certainly don't. Thank you. You got it. Thank you for that opening statement as well. I'll pass a prophet and want to let you know, folks, a major debate going on tonight, whether or not Joe Rogan's podcast has done more harm than good in the context of COVID in particular between Destiny and Gavin McGinnis, who collide for the first time tonight on Modern Day Debate. You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button. And with that, we're going to jump into 
the rebuttal periods now. In particular, we start with an eight-minute rebuttal. This is from Khalid, and then we'll go back to Apostate Prophet and alternate throughout the debate. With that, thanks so much, Khalid. The floor is all yours for your rebuttal. Uh, so let me address it. So first he says on that liberal societies are more um, productive, but again, here's from um, Patrick Guinan, why liberalism failed. Liberalism has drawn on pre-liberal inheritance and resources that once sustained liberalism, but which it cannot replenish. loosening of social bonds, family, et cetera, and so on. Thing is, um, liberalism is rich because um, of that, because they inherited from pre-colonial monarchies the wealth of Africa, but that again is really irrelevant. Next, he talks about um, satisfaction, but here's a paper from Oneness and Beliefs on uh, Effect on Life Satisfaction. This is from Germany, and all the participants here are, are from um, are in Germany. Now, in Germany, the people who are most satisfied with their lives are Muslims. The people who are least satisfied are atheists. He mentions Nordic countries, but this is from the uh, Nordic Council. Can't hear you. I don't know if you're speaking. We cannot hear you, Khalid, if you happen to be talking. You might have muted your, your you're not showing as muted on my side. In case you accidentally unplugged your microphone or something like that. I also will mention, folks, while we're waiting, both of our guests are linked in the description. And you can check out plenty more. Hello? Thanks so much. Khalid, the floor is all yours for the rest of your opening or rebuttal. The Nordic Council, it shows religious people are more happier in Scandinavia. The meta-analysis on happiness. And it shows that, again... Religious people are less depressed. Uh, he mentions a lot of things, but none of those things are really relevant to my topic, which is um, does um, does these values help you survive uh, in the evolutionary game of life? He mentions birth rates, but I've already explained how birth rates. Um, low birth rates result in the collapse of civilization as can be observed in um, Asian countries and in Europe. Um, and I explained how this execution results in, um, if, if we did not do it, then our societies would basically collapse. I gave several examples on um, Turkey and Somalia, as well as in medieval, medieval times where these liberal policies resulted in the collapse of civilization. And he, does, he doesn't really address any of that, like, why should we not do that? It doesn't really make sense, because if we did tolerate it, then um, we'd basically collapse. Um, that's my rebuttal. You got it. Thank you very much. We're going to kick it over to Apostate Prophet for his rebuttal as well. Apostate Prophet, the floor is all yours for your eight-minute rebuttal now. I find it very funny. Um, before the debate in the talks, he told me that I will probably dismiss certain things as irrelevant, which is <laughs> very ironic. He just dismissed basically every much that I said as irrelevant. Uh, which I, I don't even know what to say. It's, 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 almost a, it's almost a comedy show here. So um, as said, that was my opening statement. It wasn't my rebuttal. My rebuttal is coming now. Uh, it, it's, I find it very funny that he mentions uh, John Locke and uh, liberal philosophers or uh, you know pioneers of, of liberalism in order to make his point. Uh, John Locke is one of the forerunners of ideas of um, a freer and happier society, a liberal society. Um, among those we have, we have Mill, for example, who clearly argues for uh, societies where um, freedom is upheld, where uh, the harm principle is upheld, where we do not harm others unless they explicitly harm us or harm others as well. And by harm, we are not speaking of emotional harm or you know societal harm or whatever it is, but, but by literal harm. So uh, if, you know, physical harm, for example, if somebody tries to kill others, we stop them because we have a justification for that. And uh, the, 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 the line, the collection 
generation of philosophers and thinkers, even the people who authored the researches that he cites, if we put them together into a room and ask them, hey guys, do you think we should execute apostates? They will probably unanimously say, are you crazy? Of course not. I mean, the whole uh, idea, core idea of liberalism is to establish societies in which people are not ruled by authoritarian, totalitarian states, not by certain religions which suppress them, because that in history has repeatedly led to revolutions, to societal collapse, and that the solution of that to establish a better future lies in letting people live and letting people think and speak freely unless they harm others through their actions directly. So, um, that's, that is why I find it very ironic. I wish he could present some uh, Muslim researches and some Islamic research which shows us uh, you know, relevant uh, data on why it is good to execute apostates and why apostasy is bad. Unfortunately, there is really no such thing. What he does is that he hypothesizes a lot with uh, ideas on why liberal societies have grown and why the West is so good and what would happen if adultery was on the rise, for example. He doesn't actually appeal to proper data that we have, which fact checks, which looks directly at the numbers, at the reality in front of us. I cited the Human Development Index, for example, which takes many factors into consideration, such as the individual liberties, the access to work, the access to basic uh, human needs needs and education and happiness in general. And these look at the actual data and rank the Muslim world very low while ranking the liberal world very high. And you will find this pattern again in uh, you know, global happiness where, again, liberal societies are ranked very high. In peace where liberal societies are ranked very high. And I'm not here just advocating for liberalism. I'm merely speaking against the strange idea here that liberalism was the downfall while Islam was the answer. Obviously, the numbers, the statistics are not telling us that. Uh, theories on why liberalism makes for better societies and uh, you know why Islam is on the decline and you can you can pick out as many research papers and ideas on these as you want you can ask different uh, professors and different psychologists different educators who have different theories and ideas on these things the matter of the fact is that if you look at the numbers you will simply find that uh, your whole theory of liberalism destroying societies is a myth the oldest liberal societies that we have the oldest freest societies that we have in the West turned themselves around through revolutions, through the European miracle, and created stable societies that are currently still the most stable, the most promising societies that we have. He gives us examples of societies that were, until very recent times, still Islamic. He gives Turkey as an example. I'm sorry, in Turkey in the 1920s, there was still a market of slaves. Well, in, in the 1910s, I'm sorry, don't let me misrepresent that. There was still a market of slaves. Turkey was the capital of the last Islamic empire in the world. Somalia is in a fight of constant, um, a constant fight between Islamism and uh, different ideologies. Only within the last decades, we have ha had public executions in Somalia where people had their limbs cut off because they rebelled against Islamic authorities. These are not examples of societies that are being liberalized or that or that are liberal, that are great examples of liberalism. These are societies that go through change. Societies that are liberal are those that are highly ranked on the Human uh, Development Index and many other um, maps and statistics that show us that your ideology is a cancer to the world and freedom is not. Uh, when it comes to justifications for freedom of speech, for example, we have a lot of research. We can cite so many of those uh, by Kent Greenewald, which uh, shows us that uh, freedom of speech, a highly cited research, shows us that uh, freedom of speech makes for better development, more creativity, and uh, advancement of ideas, which is lacking in the Muslim world, which is why productivity is lacking in the Muslim world. Uh, happiness is related to more freedom and more, more perceived freedom. He gives an example of uh, Muslims who are more satisfied according to self-reports in countries like Germany or uh, Norway, for example. What he fails to realize is that, uh, is that a declaration of satisfaction is not the same as happiness overall in general. If you ask a regular Muslim who is uh, suffering and poor and sick, he will say, oh, I'm satisfied because that's 
what you say, that's what you do. But if you look at the general standard of living of that Muslim, you see that they are they, that they may be uh, highly sad in trouble, stressed, desperate, have no access to proper living standards, are really sad at the end. And you look at a uh, at, at a Swedish person, for example, who uh, lives lavishly, who is happy, who can do whatever they want, they really enjoy life, have so much fun, feel happiness. But if you ask them, the Swedish person might say, oh, yeah, I wish I had more, while the other person who is at the end of his life might say, I am satisfied, because that's just what people say. I'm sorry, that's a self-report of how satisfied you are with your miserable or great circumstances. It is not a report of your standards of living, of your health, of your development, of your happiness, of your liberty for yourself, of your well-being. As said, I mean, he cites the, uh, American, Associ the American Psychological Association, which which ironically lists on their very own website the fundamental human will to live and the fundamental human will to be well, which is, again, as I said, an idea that has existed since the time of uh, prior to, to, to Aristotle and many of the ancient philosophers. People fundamentally, essentially want to be well, want to be uh, happy, they want to flourish. You cannot flourish if you are oppressed, if you have authority over you, controlling every single move that you do and killing your children if they dare to leave Islam. That is not how you will receive flourishing. That's how you will get flourishing if you are so deluded that you believe this is your ultimate purpose in life and that you must go to heaven and kill everybody else who will possibly prevent that because you are so insecure. Thank you. We will jump into the next rebuttal. This is going to be six minutes each. Khalid, thanks so much. The floor is all yours. And friendly reminder, folks, I want you to attack the arguments instead of the person. And both of our guests are linked in the description. Go ahead, Khalid. The floor is all yours. Uh, as Anomaly stated, what matters in the long term is whoever reproduces the most, not those who um, acquire the most wealth in a short period of time. So none of your rebuttal really address any of that. The question I'm asking is that, is it evolutionarily beneficial to tolerate that stuff? As in, um, would it benefit us to um, um, begin to tolerate that stuff? And I've shown you tons of empirical evidence that it does not, and this evidence is from like last year. And that's my rebuttal. He still hasn't um, addressed the main argument. You got it. We will jump into the next rebuttal, six minutes from Apostate Prophet, and then we'll have yet another rebuttal section. Go ahead, Apostate Prophet, the floor is all yours for six minutes. That's very funny because we're in the last rebuttals right now. So if, if he wants to die on this hill, I think it's a very terrible uh, hill to die on. <laughs> but uh, I, I find it very funny that um, he and people like him, I've heard it from other, other Islamists before, argue that um, you know, lower birth rates will lead to a destruction of society and will you know um, dissolve our societies and high birth rates are good for us. Funnily enough, I mean, I didn't even prepare for, an, for, for a discussion on birth rates. I just do a very quick Google search on uh, research related to birth rates and the benefit. And the first things that I found is uh, that benefits raise uh, economic benefits. Uh, so, sorry, b lower birth rates raise economic benefits. That lower birth rates are associated with uh, uh, more developed societies. That lower birth rates are a normal, regular, completely natural, healthy result of advancing, developing societies, which have more access to happier lives, to family planning, and so on. Have you heard of the term planning, of family planning? It's a very normal thing that people who are no longer scared of being oppressed and, uh, you know, of dying of uh, from very simple diseases under very simple uh, common circumstances like war, that they are more able to plan their lives and they are more able to, you know, plan on making a certain number of children children and is forming a certain family that is uh, restricted to, I don't know, two kids or three kids that you can take care of, not 12 kids, because you expect that four of them or five of them might die very soon in a war or through terrorism or through diseases and so on. It, this is very this is very common. I don't know what he thinks and how he imagines reality, but when birth rates go lower, this does not mean that the society eventually uh, declines because no new babies are born 
anymore and then the society collapses. No, it simply means that people make fewer babies. And now you might argue that making fewer babies might lead to a results of uh, you know, a, a decrease in uh, workforce, in labor force. For example, in Japan, we actually have an example of that. And he could argue that uh, a result of lower birth rates might be something like in Japan, where people are becoming too advanced, birth rates are getting too low, and Japan uh, finds fewer and fewer uh, workers for labor, which is needed within the country. And therefore, a country like Japan, for example, looks for ways to solve this problem through automation or through many other means, maybe even through a uh, limited amount of immigration. What that does not mean, and what Japan is not afraid of, what is not supported by any amount of research, is that because of lower birth rates due to family planning and more comfortable lives, the society will eventually not make any babies and everybody will die and society will collapse. That is impossible because even if the society would become bad again and would lead to more decline, people would end up making more babies due to uh, circumstances, health circumstances, life circumstances becoming lower and less desirable, which leads to higher population growth through birth rates. Higher population growth do not make for better societies. If you look at a map of, uh, of birth rates, you will see that the most underdeveloped cultures happen to have the highest birth rates. African countries with the lowest uh, standards of living of life have very high birth rates. Muslim countries with very low uh, standards of life have higher birth rates. Even Muslim countries with much better standards of living have, have lower birth rates. This is how it works, because birth rates are associated with a general standard of living and with happiness and more. As said, he brought many other uh, points, such as that, uh, I don't know, that, that, pe that people uh, come to the West and uh, go on OnlyFans and try to and, and, and make money over OnlyFans, or that people have premarital sex or extramarital sex, and that this is, of course, uh, terrible, and that this, lead, this will lead to societal collapse. I mean, uh, <laughs> it, it, it is simply very uh, strange to argue uh, and to present data that if everyone beca becomes an atheist, then people will naturally engage in, you know, masses of adultery and in selling their uh, th their dance moves on OnlyFans, which will lead to a societal collapse. It is simply a ridiculous line of reasoning supported by no research at all. It might lead to certain instabilities at first. Every change does, including converting to Islam. Oh, nice point, right. He argued, for example, that people who leave Islam initially have engaged in certain activities activities that are destructive, and he gave a few names as examples. Funnily enough, we have research, uh, I came across one quite uh, recently, which says that conversion to Islam is associated with a very high increase in violence, and that converts among uh, Muslims are disproportionate in terms of terrorist activity. And this is explained by many different theories. One of those is, um, if I find it, I will immediately cite it. One of those is that uh, people who convert to Islam, as opposed to people who were always Muslims, are more enthusiastic, more, um, you know, more, more excited about their religion and practice their religion often more, uh, w with more enthusiasm, with more dedication and very often end up committing crimes in the name of their religion and becoming radical. So uh, if you want to talk about how people who change their religions and their worldviews engage in destructive activities, maybe we could come to that and we could talk about why Islamic terrorism is the number one motivator behind terrorism in the world. But we could also cite uh, different things to refute all your other points. For example, from the European Institute for Gender Equality, which shows us, which gives us statistics. Uh, you can look this up on the as said, the European Institute for Gender Equality, that gender equality, for example, is highly correlated with uh, a high increase in GDP per capita and in uh, development in general. Um, child, child marriage and cousin marriage are very common in the Islamic culture, both related with a high decrease in uh, mental health and uh, standard of living and so on. We could go forever with this, but of course everything is irrelevant to him. So what am I going to say? We will jump into, I actually had a posse prophet, correct me if I'm wrong, as well as Khalid, let me know. I had a, another six minute rebuttal from each of you, but if you wanted, if I was wrong about that, let me know. In addition, one thing we could try is we could jump into the closing statements as we do have a lot of questions for the Q&A already. So, 
in my opinion, there is not much to discuss here. We could just jump to uh, closing statements. Khalid, uh, are you good with that? Khalid, are you there? It's technology. It's not. It doesn't go well with. He's, it. Oh he's yeah, good. you hear me? You got it. Uh, you're, you're good with going into the closings. Yeah. All right, we'll jump into these closings, six minutes each, and then we'll jump into your questions, folks. So thanks so much for sending in your questions into the old live chat. And with that, Khalid, the floor is all yours for your six-minute closing. Uh, I cited tons of evidence like Eric Kaufman, Rostan, et cetera, mostly Kaufman in his books. So there's already tons of evidence on that. Charles Jones also published another paper on the end of economic growth, consequences of a declining population. So... I don't know why you're ignoring the evidence. And it doesn't seem you have an actual refutation against anything I actually said. And nowhere throughout the argument did you really address the issues. That's my closing statement. You got it. We'll jump into AP's closing statement and then right into that Q&A. So thanks for your questions, folks. AP, the floor is all yours. Well, that was fantastic. I think... Um... I don't know, some, some people have mentioned it before, but I'm kind of uh, curious if uh, our friend Khalid is, m might be uh, a fake Muslim who is just here to make Islam look bad because that's what's really happening here right now. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for, for this, uh, for serving humanity with such a fantastic uh, service here that you have done. Thank you so much, really great. Uh, what, what I have done through my rebuttals is to respond to um, the supposed research that he cited and to uh, appeal to it while appealing to statistics in general and uh, pointing out that the statistics that pointing out at the research that he shows are opinion pieces uh, and, and theories which do not combine very well the way he intends them to combine with with actual statistics that we have and uh I cited a lot of uh, reasons why a freer society is better, including citing research. He kind of says, I'm not citing uh, you know, evidence or not refuting his evidence, which is very weird. He simply dismisses everything as irrelevant. I don't even know what to say anymore at this point. I'm kind of, I kind of feel like this is a prank. But um, I mean, I guess the message here is very clear. The point stands. Uh, he has not shown us any reason as to why reasonable people in the world, developed advanced people in the world, should accept the idea that people who leave the Islamic religion, who simply do not believe in Islam anymore, who think for themselves should be killed, executed, massacred, you know, their lives taken, literally. Uh, he didn't. He didn't give us any reason to make people believe that. And today, he has certainly not convinced a single soul with that. Not a single person with that. Uh, it, it, he will not be able to convince people. Uh, he will not be able to make any good reasons for that outside of appealing to research that doesn't even support his own position. Uh, the point stands: killing people for simply believing in something that you believe for, for not no longer believing in something that you. Uh, believe in is destructive to society, is undesirable, is contrary to the uh, human will to live, is contrary to the human will to flourish, is contrary to a functioning better society. A, a society where everybody is forced to think the same is as the research says, as the statistics, as all the data says not a good way to lead to create a society. A society where everyone is forced to think the same thing is not a healthy society. It is a stupid society, a, destruct, a destroyed society, a society that is not promising, that is not healthy, that is not happy, that is not developed. We don't have any evidence for such a society that is actually developed, that is actually advanced and happy, and that, that creates so many wonderful things in the world. Societies where people are free to do whatever they want, to speak freely, to think freely are those who create the internet that you access your uh, debate with and that you argue uh, on your debate with. Societies where people can think freely are societies that influence the world through uh, new ideas that amaze everybody, that captivate people, that people spend their whole time with. So freedom is what will bring you well-being. Freedom is in alignment with the ideas of the, of the liberal thinkers. Uh, what, what will make societies happier in the long run? What will make societies not go to new revolutions, to new societal collapse, to new shootings in the street, to new oppressions, to bloodbaths in the street? Islam is 
what does exactly that. Islam invaded the world and oppressed the world and massacred populations for over a thousand and four hundred years. It is so good that that has stopped at the hands of the Western world and at the hands of ex-Muslims and many others who reformed Muslim societies from within. And that will continue. And I'm happy to say that most people in the world who recognize their will to live and their will to be flourish are with me on this one. And I hope the Islamists could look within themselves and also recognize that they are really doing something terribly wrong by being deluded of, with ideas of going to heaven and having sex with virgins and therefore killing people who will prevent that from happening. Thank you so much. You got to thank you very much for those closing statements, gentlemen. And want to let you know, folks, we're going to jump into the Q&A. As mentioned before, our guests are linked in the description. That includes, if you're listening via the podcast, Modern Day Debate is on podcast. So you can find us on every major podcast app. And want to let you know, as mentioned, our guests are linked in the description box for the podcast episode as well. So jumping into these questions, thanks so much. We're looking for substantive questions so if it's just a personal attack on the person we're not going to read it muhammad hakim thanks so much for your question says graphic design is my passion good for you muhammad as well as aku says beautiful representation brother that was for i think that was for you khalid at the very start darth whore says for khalid how could you have faith if it is the result of compulsion which i believe the quran explicitly forbids Um, the thing is, I talked about natural selection and that certain things survive and other things do not. So those who have faith of um, to naturally have it, naturally have those values, will survive while those that do not won't. And I've already shown like tons of evidence in my PowerPoint presentation on how this is actually true and all the um, statistical data to go along with it. You got it. And there is a poll in the live chat right now asking what position you most identify with, folks. If you haven't seen this, as of right now, atheism is leading with 37%. Christianity is at 27%. And Islam is at 21%, as well as other, which is at 16%. Curious and want to let you know, if you happen to be Muslim, we definitely want to give you a chance to make your case. Recording in progress. We, in the past do want to you could say in the past i don't think we've done as good of a job enough in terms of getting muslim guests on the show and so we do want to let you know if you're a muslim debater and you want to come on email me at modern debate at gmail.com this one coming in from silver ltc says ap would you like the establishment of a new caliphate so the world can see how terrible it is buyer beware man Would I, <laughs> would I want the establishment of a new caliphate just for the world to see how terrible it is? No, I don't think, I don't think it's. I mean, if, if I was a little bit uh, psychopathic, I guess if I had such tendencies and didn't value human life much, I would say, yeah, okay, that's actually a very good example to show to the world how messed up Islam is. But I don't think it's worth it. We already have enough examples. If you simply want to look at the examples, we don't need more examples. We need less Islam, not more. You got it. Thank you very much for this question. Coming in from Stop Scamming Man says, question for Khalid, in your estimation, what should be done to an apostate in an Islamic state who also claims he or she was a minor when they left the faith? Um, probably jail. Gotcha. And thank you very much for this question. Coming in from Nikhil Sanka says, for Kenny... I'm not sure who Kenny is supposed to be, but they say, do atheists have the same rights in Muslim countries as Muslims do in secular countries? It's probably for Khalid. Go ahead, Khalid. Or Kenny. Um, yeah, generally there's a, there was a system um, in the Ottoman Empire called the Dimni system, where as long as they paid the taxes, they'd be fine. And as long as they don't cause, um, destroy social cohesion. Gotcha. Sure, this one will get us demonetized for life. Zagros Ozken says, would Khalid kill AP himself if he saw him or leave it up to the government? Probably the government. <laughs> okay, thank you. This one coming in from Stop Scamming Man says, question to AP, do you think Saudi Arabia and Turkey will be majority non-religious by the year 
2,100. Um, good question. 2,100, uh, hard to foresee. I would say that uh, the, the, num the numbers are rising very rapidly. In Turkey, many Muslim authorities and uh, you know, government authorities and politicians have pointed out that there is a, a concerning rise in atheism and deism. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, we had religious authorities who have made explanations uh, on that and said that we should do whatever necessary to prevent the current rise of atheism. Uh, it is happening. I'm not sure if they will be majority Muslim, but I, I generally think that within the 200 years, Islam will largely lose its uh, grip on society. It's it's happening right now. I would hope so. I would hope that people leave Islam by 2050 together. <laughs> you got it. Thank you very much for this question. Coming in from Selver LTC strikes again. Says, Khalid, are you aware of the parable of the prodigal son? If apostates are killed, you were you are condemning them to hellfire with no chance of returning. Khalid? Hello? Yes, we're still here. Oh, so yeah. Um, um, I don't really determine that. You determine that based on how you behave and what you, um, how you live your life. You got it. Thank you very much for this question coming in from Stop Scamming Man. Says question to Khalid: In an ideal caliphate, what do you think should become of a minor who openly leaves Islam and never comes back? I think you answered that. You said prison. Inspiring philosophy strikes. He says, question for Khalid, by your logic, should the U.S. execute Christian apostates that convert to Islam for going against the current societal order in the U.S.? They already do that, in a sense. Oh. For example, I think the, um, <laughs> there was this one named um, Marion Petron from France who basically did that and got punished by the government. You got it. Thank you very much for this question coming in from Muhammad Hakim says, for Khalid, do you really have a Ph.D.? And if you claim that Muslims are the happiest in the non-Muslim countries, are you happy in the super liberal United States? To me, you seem really unhappy. Um, yeah, in computer science. And no, I'm not. You're not happy? No. OK. For various reasons. Okay, and they asked if you have a PhD. Yeah, in computer science. Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha, thank you. Interesting, as well as Don Fulman, appreciate your support, says thanks. Thank you all. We need more Muslim debates. Perfect. I couldn't agree more. If you're a Muslim and you want to debate, email me at moderndaydebate at gmail.com. Amy Newman says, after show, after the debate, and question for Khalid. What would it take to change your mind that these countries should not execute apostates? It would have to benefit us somehow. You got it. And this one coming in from Stop Scamming Man says, question to Khalid. If Islam is true and a person can end up in hell forever, why have children, much less lots of them, with each kid, or I say, question to Khalid, if Islam is true and a person can end up in hell forever, why have children, much less many of them. With each kid comes a higher risk of one being damned to hell forever. Uh, because you could raise them to be proper. You got it? This one coming in from, do you appreciate your question? Dave Gar says, there will be no evolutionary pressures to change in a monoculture. The culling hypothesis of Khalid is both biologically and philosophically wrong. Khalid, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's something we already see. Um, Eric Kaufman has already written a book on this where he goes much more deeper into it. You got it. Carell, I saw you send in a super chat, but I didn't see a question attached. Let me know in the normal chat if you want me to ask a question because I didn't see it there in the super chat. XXWLZXX says, is this debate still on? When is it starting? You might want to refresh your page. And Jeff Schneider, thanks for your question, says T-Jump versus Darth. Uh, versus Godless Girl video premiere tomorrow. Hope you can make it. Sounds juicy. We miss Darth and we miss Godless Girl as well. Let's see. Uh, Tom was on last night, in case you didn't know, folks. That was a juicy debate. Islam versus atheism, in case you missed it. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. SWGG says, AP, you have been equating recently, quote, apostasy law, unquote, in Islam to the ongoing Muslim 
genocide in China, do you believe that apostasy law in Judaism is the same as the Jewish Holocaust? Pasi Previt, can you hear me? Oh, 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 was that for me? Sorry, I, I, I completely... They said, you have been equating recently, recently you've been equating quote-unquote apostasy law in Islam to the ongoing Muslim genocide in China. And they said, do you believe that apostasy law in Judaism is the same as the Jewish Holocaust? Apostasy law in Judaism was, was uh, I mean, completely different things. Um, I usually, I have recently simply uh, said that if you uh, support executing people for leaving Islam, then, uh, and you think people have no right to oppose that and to, uh, you know, to, to, to complain about that, then why do you keep complaining about a, a genocide in China, for example, which I am against, by the way. Uh, that's all I said. Uh, I don't understand how that connects to the rest of the question. You got it, and thank you very much for this question coming in from D. Bodro. Let me know if I pronounced it right. Says, what does Khalid think of slavery? Um, based and red pilled. Huh? I said it's based and red pilled and epic. Gotcha. And for but in a sense, they already exist kind of like a weight slavery. In places like Walmart, Amazon, etc., so on, it's not something that something that will exist in society in one form or another. So he's sla saying slavery is good, and this is an actual Muslim who exists on Twitter by the name of uh, Khalid Ten Billion IQ or something like that. This Very one coming in from this is not a prank, guys. For Khan Almas says Khalid, would you marry a person who has six years of uh, being on the planet? Uh, no, that's not really how it works, but I know what the question is about. Gotcha. And thank you very much for your question. Sean MacD says, if an idea is true, why is death threat necessary, Khalid? Why not just persuade them versus the reason and logic? Stupidity. Um, because some people um, are emotional when it comes to these things. Um, think about um, in America, like with the, the liberals, even if you show them facts, they're still going to deny it emotionally. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. CEO Vash M says, for apostate profit, do you think the West would be able to, de to achieve all that economic development without slaughtering people, robbing and enslaving them for the past 200 years of liberal Western history? Uh, I don't know what enslaving uh, refers to. Most of the Western world did not engage in slavery uh, in, the, in the last 200 years or anything, or, or, or even prior to that. Most of the Western world gave up uh, practices uh, like that very long ago. Serfdom existed to a certain extent, which is not equated to slavery, um, which is a completely different system within, an own, within a society and its own uh, you know, citizens and residents. Um, Colonization, of course, which we nowadays consider, which we nowadays regret, I think did contribute to an en enrichment of uh, Western civilizations. Of course, it's, it's part of it. Uh, is it is it therefore right and justifiable? I don't think it is, uh, or, or to most to the greatest to the great extent, I don't think it is. Uh, which does not change the fact that we regret certain things that happened in the West, uh, but uh, the Islamic side does not regret those things. That said, to the actual question, do I think that the success of the West is largely due to these things? No, I don't. The West has been uh, has had a very great work discipline for a very long time now, for centuries now, which caused the change in Europe and its miracle. This one coming in from... Mush says... You seem to constantly speak about killing an Islam apostate prophet, namely being the only thing that happens in Islam. You don't accept any justification for killing that we give. What? <laughs> I don't understand the question. What? I think they're saying, like, this is, like, totally putting it in an inverse way. Maybe they're saying, or do you think that there's ever a way in which killing is justified? 
Of course. I mean, in self-defense, it is definitely justified. If you if you see somebody, uh, you know, um, at the brink of killing somebody else, uh, and you know that their cause is, you know, unjustified. If you see that somebody is being uh, sexually assaulted, I think it's completely justified to to do that. If terrorists plague your country and threaten to kill more people, it's okay to kill them. Uh, if it's absolutely necessary, you know, uh, by law enforcement. But no, killing people for their opinions is certainly, as we have demonstrated today, not something that is justifiable. It's horrible. This one coming in from XXWLZXX says Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, and Hong Kong were all colonized, and now they are developed societies. What is the Islamic world's excuse? Uh, you have tons of rich ones in the Gulf, so it's not a real question. Even oil countries. <laughs> There's also Brunei. And, which, um, which is also an oil country. Um, California is a gold country. So? That contribute to the riches in California. Yeah, does it make the point that... Oh, that uh, thing does it is, make the um, point that it was actually Countries asking? can use no. their resources to enrich themselves. That's not an argument against um, ideas. Sure, but that's not the point of the question here, but whatever. <laughs> this one coming in from Corel says, Khalid, what should happen to you if you left Islam? Um, same thing as I said, but um, I wouldn't do something that stupid. This one coming in from, do want to make sure that I've gotten all the questions. Let's see, this one coming in from Comment Warrior, the Jesus Christ follower, says, question to AP, what is your favorite Muslim country? My favorite Muslim country? Uh, I'm not sure. I've always wanted to visit um, Egypt. Um, I always wanted to go to Saudi Arabia just to see the environment and uh, very nice places that were taken by the Islamists. Um, I don't. I don't think there's really any country that I that I admire. Uh, maybe maybe I don't know Kazakhstan or something like that. Memo Lee says Islam means peace. People like Khalid are poisoning the well. This is a shame. And Khalid will give, I guess we'll give each of you a chance to respond. What's the question? I think they're saying that you, that actually Islam is a peaceful religion and that you're making it look dangerous when it uh, isn't actually dangerous. Um, no, I'm just talking about a controversial topic without really holding back. And there is an empirical evidence to back up my reasoning. I even started an entire book. It's not really my argument, but if you want a more academic insight into it, you can read um, Eric Kaufman's book. Um, my response is Islam does not mean peace. Islam literally means submission. Uh, that's a misconception. Islam literally stands for submission. It merely shares uh, the root of the word peace with submission. Um, Islam is also not a religion of peace. And even if Islam did claim to mean peace, uh, just because you call yourself peaceful, that doesn't mean you are actually peaceful in your practices, as, de as demonstrated. It's a terrible religion. This one coming in from X Dronin. Sorry that you retracted your question. I don't know what it was, but let me know if you think of it. Andrew Henry says, question to Khalid, does the Taliban enforce Sharia properly? As far as I've seen, yes, with the exception of some political relationships. You got it. And last question that's coming in right now, Aloweed L. Himri, thanks for your question, says AP's argument came down to echo or eco and technology advancements. I think they mean economic Islam led in these categories for 1,300 years, 13 times longer than the U.S. has. Now that China looks to lead, will your argument change to communism being better than liberalism, AP? I think that's a terrible objection. First off, um, if you have listened to my opening speech and also my rebuttals, uh, it was not at all restricted to economic and technological advancements. I talked very, very lengthily about mental health, about uh, creativity, about uh, human development index, which includes many different factors, about standards of living, uh, happiness, self-reported happiness, and so on. Uh, when it comes to the rest of the question, uh, Islam led these in... The, 
for over 1,300 years. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, you may be referring to a rise of Islamic research for Islam within the first centuries of Islam, which Muslims keep appealing to as the golden ages. After that, Islam was not unique. Islam adopted these developments from previously existing cultures which it conquered and did not add anything, uh, did not add much to it after that. The Islamic uh, achievements are very old. Just because uh, you were good at some point in development, in research, that does not mean everyone else was therefore terrible. And you know, it's, it's just completely uh, contrary to what we are arguing for here. I mean, we are talking about liberalism as an example compared to Islam. There is no barrier in front of, um, in front of Islam today, no barrier in front of liberalism today, and we see very well how these fare against each other. You got it. Can I add on to that? Go ahead. Uh, Fernand Bradell, Bradell is a historian, and he stated that um, in his book, um, A History of Civilizations, that did, Islam did add on to it for like 500 years, so that's a lie. You got it, and thank you very much for your question. This one coming in from Alawid El Himri. Oh, we got that one. This one coming in from, I can't tell what uh, their name is. Is it a different language? But they say, for Khalid, if your parents left Islam, should they be killed? Hmm. I'd have to think about it. Next up, XXWLZXX says, according to Ronald F. Englehart, Islamic societies are disproportionately less happy than other societies, especially European ones. Khalid? Um, I cited in um, I cited in anomalies that short-term gains don't matter. What matters is those who reproduce the most, and they're the ones who win the game of life. You got it. And this one coming in from do appreciate your question. Not a verse says. Khalid, we understand that Islam relies upon the fear factor of executing apostates for its existence, but with that inhumanity aside, why are you in the West unhappily so? Why not live in a Muslim country and make it work? Yeah, that's what I would do. I'm already doing that. Oh, you already? I thought you lived in the United States. No, I do, but um, I'm working towards it. Oh, okay. Angel I says, towards. question for Khalid, if Islam was so friendly to creative people and science, why now does it seem to stifle the same things? Um, it doesn't. I showed like a whole bunch of professors who um, um, contribute a lot, like um, Jackie Ying. You got it. And let's see, any last, oh, we do have more questions. This one coming in from XXWLZ. XX says, if birth rates are so important, why did Ayatollah Khomeini institute massive birth control that dropped the birth rate from 8.1 to 2.0 within a generation? Um, can you repeat it? It goes from 8.1 to 2, yeah. right? Yep, they said it went from 8.1 to 2.0. Oh, okay, um, so um, that would be a mistake. That would be a bad thing. Gotcha. This one coming in from Soyovush M. Siovush says AP in the U.S. A. Martinez got 15 years of jail for burning an LGBT flag. Do you think people should have a right to oppose same sex marriage without such consequences? Of course, they should be able to uh, oppose, but uh, I think that is, as far as I remember, that it's a huge mis misrepresentation of what actually happened. That is from a few years ago, where a uh, repeated offender who was in prison before uh, actually took a flag that did not belong to him and burned it in front of a place and was then accused of arson and of uh, disrupting the peace and was, and then as a repeated offender, received a sentence, which is still ongoing. So that's a huge misrepresentation representation nobody uh, gets 15 years in jail or anything like that for simply burning an LGBT flag that, that belongs to themselves. This one coming in from Pudu says Khalid do you consider bin Laden to be a terrorist or a martyr? Um, you could look at um, there's a newspaper that talks about how he was a freedom fighter against the Soviet Union so you could look at that. 
This one from Mush and, says, but he didn't AP. respond to the question. So. He didn't respond to the question. So, Mush says, it is true that Islam was spread by the sword initially apostate prophet, just like any other major community. However, today that is not the case. So why is Islam growing? Islam is not growing today, uh, especially not by conversion. Not New people are not becoming Muslims. Islam's growth, according to Pew Research, which is a research that is ironically often cited by Muslims, is to 99.7% due to birth rates and uh, young age, and only to 0.3% uh, due to conversion. People are not converting to Islam in masses. That is a huge myth, which I have demonstrated and which many others have demonstrated before. You can simply find that by a simple search for scholarly articles or on Google for maps. Islam did spread uh, at the beginning uniquely through war, through massacre. Uh, you are referring to other religions. Christianity, for example, did spread it in its history through war, but did not initially do so. Islam did, I'm sorry to say. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Mush says, for both, by the year 2050, so in other words, about 28 years from now, Islam is predicted to be the largest world view or belief or religion out there. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, that's just called a natural selection. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. They said by the year 2050, so in about 28 years, Islam is predicted to be the greatest or largest world religion what are your thoughts on this uh i think if that was true that would be that would be um very disappointing i would be disappointed in humanity but uh the research is actually that according to uh current uh predictions to current growth rates uh based on three different scenarios uh it is supposed to be the largest in 2050 or later um which does not take several factors into consideration including the fact that we have a an, uh, a, a, a very large, rapidly increasing growth of people who leave Islam, which was not included in the actual research and which is emerging now. So I would think that there's a lot to contest about that research. We'll see. You got it. This one coming in from Charlotte says, Khalid, you're fine with killing apostates, but you'd have to think about it. If it were your actual family, careful, your spine is leaving your body. Uh, what's the question exactly? I think they're accusing you of being soft for hesitating about killing your own parents if they left the Islamic faith. Um, I'd probably just educate them a lot. And gotcha. if not, then yeah, sure. But they're saying, they, they recognize that, they're acknowledging that, and they're saying you're getting soft. They're saying you should be having them put to death by the state. Well, I guess that is, yeah, true. This if one from um, education didn't work. Oh, then you would. Okay, Long Nights YouTube and says, Khalid, does the full extent of the laws of Islam apply to your family as well? We often see how much biblical law bends when it comes to family. This is kind of like um, the yeah, last the question. Yeah, the full extent. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the full extent. C of Vush M says, AP in U.S., Monica Mears and her adult son were jailed for incest? Isn't that against freedom? You, as an incest supporter, should understand. <laughs> you into that First stuff? Of, I, I never supported incest. This is a uh, completely idiotic misrepresentation of what I actually said in the past. I was specifically talking about how uh, a certain case of uh, grown adults who engage in an activity where they cannot harm others, such as you know not engaging in reproduction or where it's impossible, would not be directly harmful to anybody, uh, which is what I said. I never advocated for incest or anything like that. That is, that is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know if that case in America, I'm not saying every country has the perfect law. So it's kind of a strange thing to bring certain laws from certain Western countries as an example to kind of uh, ask me, so what about this? But um, I don't know. I mean, if you want to ask me what I whether I think incest should be legalized or be made illegal, it is not something that I have extensively ta uh, thought about. So not something that I have really an, op an opinion on. Gotcha. I think, oh, let's see. One last question. W-O-M says, 
what if we create a machine which allows humans to communicate with animals and they consent for sex? Doesn't that make it moral, leaving behind the claim it's filthy and all? Where did that come from? But go ahead, AP. I think they're... Uh, I, sorry, I'm sorry, I missed the question. I'm I think they're saying if there's a machine that allowed animals to communicate and to say yes to a human request to have sex with it, would you be okay with it then? Because it would I be sense. okay with it then? That's a very strange hypothetical question. <laughs> um, so we do reject uh, bestiality hypothetically because uh, because we think it is uh, first off not only a non-consensual uh, interaction; it is also a directly harmful one uh, to the human and to the animal. Um, even if there was a consent involved somehow, I still don't think that would be justifiable because I'm sorry to say this, given the weird example, we also don't take the consent of, of uh, young humans as acceptable just because they seemingly give us a consent, because we take into consideration that their consent is not equal to the consent of a matured adult with a developed human brain. They do not know about the consequences of something. So I don't think that would be a justification. You got it, and Thank you very much for your question. Ryan Beecham says, does not agreeing in apostasy killing mean that a person is a weak Muslim, Khalid? Um, in a sense, um, they just aren't very educated on the actual pragmatic reasons. This one coming in from Daniel Zachariah says, Khalid, where does the sun set? <laughs> yeah, I heard of this before, but it, it's just nonsense questions that <laughs> if you want, you could um, go to Far East channel and check it out. You got it. This one coming in from XX. WLZXX says, how does Khalid respond to the fact that Islamic societies, but typically Saudi Arabia, have some of the highest rates of incest in the world? Um, where's the evidence for this? This one coming in from Stop Scamming Man says, question to Khalid. As is detailed in the article, are Arabs turning their backs on religion? Irreligion is growing and outstripping the birth rate in North Africa. Will you also put that to natural selection? Um, Eric Kaufman talks about that, and he says how in the in the long term, um, it's um it will die out due to again low birth rates in the in that specific group. Gotcha. And Pudu says, Khalid, are you in Islam because you have a fear of hell? Yes, obviously, that's the most rational thing to do. But I'm emotional, of course. <laughs> this from King Kong says, people who identify as Muslim but do not practice Islam as they are supposed to, will they also get killed or punished, Khalid, or should they? Uh, they get minor ones. You're saying they should get minor punishments? Or yeah. that, just to be sure I got you right. Okay. Yeah. Siavash M says, AP, you have a video against slavery, yet in a discussion with DH, you said it was totally justified. Why the contradiction? Uh, there is no contradiction. I have a video against slavery, and in that video against slavery, I explicitly said that um, – that I do not and cannot condemn Muhammad, for example, for engaging in slavery in his own time, because Muhammad was merely engaging in activities that were uh, common in his own time. So he wasn't, uh, you know, doing something that was considered terrible or horrible, and and he then, you know, went and and, and did that. And and it's not like we know that there is uh, something that there was always something objectively wrong with slavery, and he did normalize it and do it. No, he was simply doing something that was uh, considered acceptable in his own time and he created an empire based on that. I said before very clearly that I cannot blame uh, s slavery in history and that it is uh, historically justifiable due to cer certain circumstances of fighting each other and, uh, you know, avoiding a comeback of your enemies. So there is no contradiction there. I am simply against slavery today and within the last centuries. This one coming in from Advenco says, AP, you only showed a correlation between the HDI and development of countries. Can you provide an actual causal link? 
I only showed. Uh, <laughs> okay, I only showed that uh, that liberal that, that secular liberal countries, freer countries, have a much higher HDI. Coincidentally, and I did not present evidence that. Uh, you know that 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 their freedom or their liberalism actually leads to that high development. That is false. I clearly presented evidence and cited articles, uh, and, and those those art those statistics also include certain articles to explain the reasoning. By the way, uh, which explain that equality and individual liberties, individual rights, lead to higher productivity, to higher GDP, to higher uh, creativity, to more peace, happiness, and so on. I did cite these. Just go back and look at the research that I. Cited. This one coming in from, I can't read the question or the uh, name because it's in a different language. They said, Khalid, are both Sunni and Shia going to heaven? No, just the first one. This one from Mush says, Apostate Prophet, do you see how Daniel Hakikachu isn't here? Let's see, posting 100 questions so that, let's see, so they say, uh, so. <laughs> This one coming in from Angel Eyes says, to both, why is in many debates or interactions with Muslims, they tend to bring up some form of sexual act or preference or obsession? <laughs> um, because that's very important to how our society functions. You got well, it. Obviously, it's not a huge problem in the world, but I, I, I don't know. There's not much to say about that from my side. You got it. And looking for any last questions before we go to our post credit scene, I want to let you know if you haven't seen it this evening, my dear friends, we're absolutely thrilled as for the very first time ever, Destiny and Gavin McGinnis collide, namely on whether or not Joe Rogan's podcast does more harm than good. That's at the bottom right of your screen. And that's tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time. You don't want to miss it. This last question coming in from Soyavush M says, AP, do you speak Arabic? Can you translate a simple sentence without Googling? And then parentheses, uh, they put in quotes, Ridvan is a diligent student, unquote. Please pronounce the end vowels clearly. No, I don't speak Arabic, uh, so I would not be able to, on the spot, translate a simple sentence uh, like this. Although I think I actually did learn that simple st sentence during uh, a, an Arabic course, but I, 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 don't, I don't speak Arabic, so I wouldn't be able to do this. No idea how uh, that is relevant to the point here. MB Khan says, Khalid, did Muhammad split the moon in half, and what evidence is there that this happened? Yes, he did. Um, there's historical evidence to it. It's been recorded and witnessed even by his enemies. You got it. Prime Minister says, question for AP, what do you think of the sex rituals in Hinduism? Do you like that? Do I like that? <laughs> I added that part. But they said, what do you think of the, what do you think of the sex rituals in Hinduism? I just thought, what the... <laughs> um, I don't know what the sex ritual rituals are. <laughs> I'm aware that there is a um, a long history of uh, positive, sex positive uh, explanations and all that. I don't know what they're referring to. I don't know if they're refer referring to you know strange things of gurus with their uh, genitals out or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know why there is a question about Hinduism here. I think if there's a practice that I find very odd, I would say it's odd. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, Let's see. Marcelo LB12 says, uh, we want to know why you host the people that you host in these debates. The truth is, like, we are open. So if you email us at moderndaydebate at gmail.com, if you want to debate, especially if you're a Muslim, we have not done a great job of including Muslim debaters in the past, I think for the last three years, to be honest. And that's something that if you reach out to us, we are willing to help set you up in a debate if you're a Muslim debater wanting to make your case on Modern Day Debate. We want to be as fair as possible to everybody. And so that's the answer to your question. And then let's see, last, let's see if there's any last questions before we do go into the post credit scene. So do want to say thank you so much for your questions. I want to let you know that our guests are linked in the description, and that includes with if you're listening via the podcast. And want to say thank you, AP and Khalid, for being with us today. It has been a juicy debate, to say the least. Thank you so much, James, and thank you, everyone who is here to view and to listen and to contribute. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And stay away from Islam. You got it? Yeah, goodbye. Um, you could check out the books I cited in the references for... Um 
more in-depth analysis of um, what I was talking about. You got it. And we will be back tonight, as mentioned, for the debate in the bottom right of your screen. It is going to be a big one, folks. You don't want to miss it, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll be back in just a moment with a post credit scene letting you know about upcoming debates. So stick around. My dear friends, I want to say thanks so much for being with us today. We hope you are doing well, and we are indeed excited about the future of Modern Day Debate. This is just the beginning. Our story is only starting. We are excited about the future. We have many juicy debates. In fact, tonight even, it is going to be a big one, as for the first time ever, as you can see at the bottom right of your screen, Destiny and Gavin Magnus, for the first time ever, collide, debating whether or not Joe Rogan's podcast does more harm than good when it comes to the topic of COVID. We are very excited about that one. You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button. But I got to let you know as well, my dear friends, if you happen to be a Muslim debater and you are like, hey, James, I want to come on and debate on Modern Day Debate, we want to give you a fair shot. It's something that we have in the last few years. We never really did host enough Muslim debates because, frankly, we, we just didn't know a lot of Muslims that wanted to debate. But now that we're kind of breaking into that topic, a lot of Muslims are reaching out. And so I want to let you know we are open. If you want to, email me at moderndaydebate at gmail.com. So very easy to remember. It's the name of the YouTube channel, Modern Day Debate, at Gmail. Want to say hello to you there in the old live chat. Emergently Adaptive, glad to have you with us, as well as Jamal Khan and Dressonics, glad to have you with us. Mar, glad you are here. Ophel Ian, glad to have you with us. Mir Muhammad, happy to have you with us. Gabriel Schosner, thanks for dropping in, as well as Nat, glad to have you here. And Charlotte, thanks for coming by says always finding new interesting speakers and content creators through this channel last time it was act 17 apologetics this time it's apostate prophet thank you for what you do thank you charlotte for your kind words that really does mean a lot and my dear friends i've got to tell you we are determined to carry out our vision we want to provide a neutral platform so that everybody has their chance to make their case on a level playing field as we get people from different walks of life talking about the big questions of life and so we want to say thank you you for your support we are excited about the future and we want to let you know whether you be muslim whether you be atheist christian black white gay straight you name it we are glad you are here we hope you feel welcome and we want to give everybody a fair shot so for example there are a lot of debate channels out there the reason i started modern day debate is because when I used to debate, because I have debated on debate channels before, I realized sometimes the, the moderator would jump in and take sides and start debating along with the debaters. And I was like, uh, what the heck is this? We want it to be fair for everybody. And that's why I try my best to not jump into the debate, to not take sides. And also, though, is there were many debaters, or I should say debate channels in the past, they would host a debate and then they would put out a video smashing one of the speakers or maybe criticizing their arguments and only one of the speakers would have their arguments criticized to which I thought well that's kind of weird it seems like you guys are pretty obviously biased in favor of one speaker we don't do that we leave it up to you the audience to make your opinion known in the comments where you can say if you thought somebody had good arguments or not because for us we really do want to be as fair as possible and we are excited though my dear friends it's not just tonight that we have a big one coming up. I've got to tell you about this one. We are excited. We just booked this one, I think it was a day or two ago. As you can see at the bottom right of your screen, David Wood, a.k.a. Axe Apollo. 
Act 17 Apologetics will be taking on Muji on who was Muhammad. Also, we are in the works for setting up another debate with Dr. Shabir Ali and Cobain. So that one's in the works. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but we are talking about it over email. We are working on, as I mentioned, filling that vision of providing a neutral platform. We want to be YouTube's fairest platform there is and we want it to be the case such that if people have a disagreement on twitter or wherever it is they would say hey you know what i trust modern day debate they've actually done a fair job with their guests we'll be willing to go on that channel and so we as mentioned want to let you know we do appreciate you being with us whether you be muslim atheist Christian, you name it. And Music Guy 20, good to see you there, friend, in the old live chat. Mar, good to see you. And World of Bliss, thanks for dropping in. I see you there in the old live chat. Diana B, thank you for your kind words. Says, awesome. Thank you for this great platform. I mean, I really appreciate that, Diana. Seriously, that means a lot. And Mao the Mighty, glad you're with us. Cogito Ergo, good to see you again. Red Sea Pirate Destroyer, thanks for coming by. Says Daniel Hikachu is my favorite guest. I really like Daniel. I, no joke, I, I get along really well with Daniel. When we had our in-person conference, I got to talk to Daniel in person, and I, I honestly really do enjoy his company. So I do want to say, I and amazingly, even though we don't have the same views on many things, and, and in fact, of course, uh, for example, but in particular that he he happens to be muslim i kind of in a in a way i kind of just identify with daniel i, I just feel like we have a lot in common so long story short i do appreciate daniel coming on modern day debate and we hope he feels like he's being treated fairly as always Flurf perspective good to see you there i see you there in the old live chat thanks for saying hi and confirm janati thanks for saying hello as well as alika thanks for coming by red-blooded republican ex-trump supporter thanks for coming by says amazing channel we appreciate that. It says, doing the Lord's work, James. I appreciate your kind words. I, I don't know if we are. We, we try to be, we want to treat people well. Uh, that is what we do want to do. So we appreciate your kind words. Psalm of Praise. Can you imagine, says, can you imagine fighting to, let's see, we are glad you were here. Psalm of Praise as well as Darth Whore. Thanks for coming by. Uh, she also likes to be called Darth Soy. Glad you made it. As well as, so let's see here. Gina from Cologne. Good to see you back, Gina. Thanks for dropping in. Ruby, glad you are with us. Says, who was Muhammad? That debate sounds interesting. And thanks for your encouragement. DNA598, thanks for coming by. Says, well done for pursuing this debate channel. It's much appreciated in this cancel culture hell. I agree. And for, and you know, I appreciate all of you guys being super supportive. Once in a while, we have a critic who says, oh, James, you shouldn't host this topic. You shouldn't host this person. And every time we have somebody complain, we don't block them. We don't erase them because we're big on people having the freedom. If they want to criticize the channel, that's okay. We don't want to, you know, ban them for that. But for every complaint we get, we always say we're going to host the topic again for every complaint that comes in. No Christ, no life. Thanks for coming by. I see you there in the old live chat as well as Principal Methods. Thanks for coming by as well as Samaya Mockel. Thanks for dropping in. Fake human, glad you're with us. And let's see here. If you haven't hit that like button already, we are at 506 likes. Amazing. That is a monster amount of likes for a live stream. Want to encourage you? Hey, we could totally get to 510. We only need four more likes. Will you be one of the four people that hits like to get us to 510? As that really does help our discoverability. No joke. The algorithm works such that the more likes or even dislikes the channel gets, the more YouTube recommends the videos. And so we really do appreciate you guys helping us with that as that is a way to support the channel in a very tangible way. It really does make a difference. My music guy, 20 good to see you as well as long nights YouTube. And thanks so much for all of your kind words as we gain a lot of knowledge by watching these debates. Thanks for saying that. I, I really do. I, I like that you say that that's encouraging for me because I always thought I want to do a debate channel where I can simultaneously learn while I'm putting out content. So for me, getting to listen to these debates, I just love getting to learn and have a YouTube channel at the same time because I, I do love YouTube. I've always been on the platform since 2006 when some of you were maybe little babies. Maybe you were little babies and you were just, you know, in your little diapers. Some of you were that young. And I got to say, we love YouTube. They have helped us grow a ton. And that's why we do follow terms of service. I don't know if today's debate followed terms of service, but most of the time we follow terms of service. The reason is, 
is because for us, we want to grow. We're not ashamed of that. We believe that our vision, that what we are doing at Modern Debate, namely providing a neutral platform so that everybody can make their case on a level playing field, is indeed valuable. We do. And so, given that we believe it's bringing value to the platform, we want to grow. We want to have a bigger impact. And that's why we always do tell people, hey, subscribe, hit that like button. We are excited about the future, and we're not ashamed of it because we really do believe we're making a positive difference on YouTube. HSW, thanks for coming by, says, bring Daniel back on. He's so entertaining and full of life. And he is passionate, no doubt about it. Red Sea Pirate Destroyer says, Professor Dave versus Ken Ham. Hey, that could be juicy. We'll see. No joke. I will reach out to Ken Ham and see if we can get him on because that would be an awesome debate. And Jamal Khan, thanks for coming by as well as Forward Tribe says, says you never got a Catholic debater either. Just a thought. We do want to get Trent Horn on. No joke. We're hoping to debate our uh, host Trent Horn with Matt Delahunty in person this summer. That's a hope. I haven't even reached out to them about that, so who knows if it'll actually happen. But we do appreciate your guys' support. Red Blood, Red Blooded Republican ex Trump supporter says, Hey, James, thanks for saying hi. I really do appreciate you. And my dear friends, we are excited though. I see you there in the live chat. Ron Hapster, thanks for coming by, as well as, let's see, Holy Armor. We are glad you are with us, as well as Emergently Adaptive. Thanks for coming by. Arya, Gabe, thanks for being with us. We are glad that you are here, my dear friend. And I've got to tell you, we are happy to have you with us. Banna, I see there in the old live chat. Mr. Alio84, hashtag antics, thanks for coming by. Delta November, good to see you again. Thanks for dropping in. And I've got to tell you, my dear friends, we are pumped to let you know we are working on getting onto Odyssey. So Odyssey is another video streaming platform. It's in the works. It's not, it's going to take a little bit. We don't know if it's going to be in the next day or two. It might take a week, but we are working on that. And then we do have a Twitch chat. Thanks. There I see a first time chat from viewer in the old chat. We do appreciate you being with us. I don't see the name because it looks like we, we do have to follow terms of service. It looks like your chat got deleted. So I do want to remind you, Sir Ban Cloud, we do want to follow the <clears throat> terms of service for both Twitch and YouTube. Good to see you, Brooke Sparrow, in the old Twitch chat, as well as Seferin and Ozian. Thanks for being with us. My dear friends, we have got to let you know, we are excited about the growth of Modern Day Debate. As you guys, just at the turn of the year, we hit 60,000 subscribers. We are now at, let me take a peek here, 64,600. So in the last month, we have come to grow significantly. A lot of that is because of the conference that we hosted in person as we are hosting in-person debates again. And we're hoping to do a number of them as we go on tour this summer, being in places such as Texas, California, possibly even New York. We are excited about that. And Khalid, I see there in the old live chat, says, 2006, damn, you are old. Amazing. You're right. We got a lot of years of experience, my dear friends. But I don't want to take advantage of the fact that compared to many other YouTube channels, they have significantly less life experience compared to us because we wouldn't want to take advantage of that fact. But you guys know what joke that's from? Anyway, we want to say Specter Parr, thanks for coming by, as well as Chess119 says, James, how do I become a Giga Chat? That's funny. You're a funny guy. You know that? As Ophel Ian says, I can't really see this as a modern day debate. Well, nonetheless, here it is. And as we mentioned, for every, I know that you're not complaining, don't worry, but we've got to, I got to give you a heads up, folks. For every complaint we get about our debate topics, we like to host it. One more time, just for those complaints. This ain't your grandma's debate channel, folks. It is going to offend you at some points. It is going to trigger you at some points. Darth Whore, as an example in the live chat, is always offended and triggered and is always calling for a safe space at the channel. And I always say, hey, you know what? It's true. We're going to defend. We're going to offend people sometimes. We're not trying to offend people, but we're willing to host topics that are sometimes controversial. And... Want to see or say hello, Sheeny NM. Thanks for coming by. We are glad to have you with us. As well as Shaquille Solomon says, great debates, very informative. Thanks for that, Shaquille. Thanks. We really do appreciate you being here with us at Modern Day Debate. 
Sideshow Nav, good to see you there in the old live chat, as well as Feduntu. Feduntu, we hope you're having a great day, and thanks for your support. Brooks Sparrow says, thank you all for hitting that like and subscribing. We crushed our goal of 510 likes. We're at 535. Huge. With five more, we can get to 540. Are you going to be one of the five people that will hit that like button? As that helps us, you guys, we do appreciate it. Martin Ellen says, I smashed that like button. Thanks, Ellen, or Martin Ellen, for that. Carm M, thanks for coming by, says, hello. Hello, Carm M, and check proofs of Islam in my playlist. Says, hey, James, when are you converting to Islam? Thanks for coming by, my dear friend. We are glad you were here, whether you be Muslim, atheist, Christian, you name it. And Grandpa Joe, thanks for coming by, says, great channel. Thanks for the debates. I appreciate that, Grandpa Joe. Seriously, we appreciate that. And let me take a sip. I'm getting tired. Darth Horse says, I didn't even complain when you fired me. It's true. I did fire her. I got a lot of pleasure out of it. And she didn't complain, to give her credit, though. Uh, she she did call me to cry. She was crying. She said, like, James, oh, you won't let me be a moderator. I said, listen, we have to be a neutral channel. Nothing can get in our way. And so I said, hey, we have to stick to our guns on this. The answer is no. And she's like, oh, James, but please, I, I'll give you soy. And I was like, I don't like soy. I'm not even, I'm not a soy boy. So I've got to tell you, we are excited, though. We want to let you know we appreciate you being with us. Too many usernames taken. Thanks for coming by. I see you there in the old live chat. And JoJo Freelancer KUP, thanks for coming by. We are glad to have you with us. Says Jay Smith faces David Wood, please. Hey, that might be a juicy one. I'm open to it. And you to have heck you. Thanks for coming by. Good to see you again. Sheeny NM says, thank you for having me. Hey, it's our pleasure. And Darth Horse says, I'm the exact opposite, mister. That's funny. You're uh you got a good sense of humor. I always appreciate that. Gross. Patate, thanks for coming by, says, yes, sensitivity is a big thing in the world today, and it's true. We are not your grandma's debate channel, as we always say. We are going to have more controversial debates. Principal Method says, do you guys do vaccine debates? Tonight's going to be close to a vaccine debate. We don't have debates on whether or not the vaccines work. We don't do that topic. That's just a little bit too controversial. We do, however, have debates on, for example, whether or not Joe Rogan's podcast does more harm than good, and then in particular regarding the vaccines though. So it is going to be related. Servant of Allah, thanks for coming by. We are glad you are with us as well as, let's see here in the old live chat. <sighs> Chess 119 says, James, how much do you bench? I don't know. It's probably only like 10 pounds. I'm a little weakling. Long Nights YouTube and says, James is one of the coolest people on earth. Thank you for your kind words. Seriously, that means a lot. It says, met him in Dallas. And we did get to meet. I am so excited that you made it to our conference. So thanks for your support of it. That really does mean a lot. Long Nights YouTube. And, and King Genius, thanks for coming by. Good to see you. And Spiritual Psychotherapy Services, glad you are with us as well as... I'm getting, I got a drink. Let me drink a little bit more water. Alpha, where is it? I just saw Alpha Dragon One. Thanks for coming by. We are glad you are here. And side, side to an app says, Soy Boy. That's right. We do have channel memberships. If you enjoy the channel, that's a way to support the channel. And you get to use some of these based emojis. I've got to show you. We love these emojis. I, I'm telling you, it's amazing. The channel memberships are awesome, and you get to you can use the emo emoji to call someone a soy boy if you'd like as well. I am excited, though. We've got to tell you, my dear friends. Let's see. Shaquille Solomon, thanks for coming by. <sighs> King Genius, glad you are here. And let's see here. Forward Tribe, good to see you. Says, think a Catholic would be a good addition to the modern day debate. I agree. We do want to host Catholics, so I haven't meant to keep them out. It's just that we don't have, usually once we break into a topic, it's way easier where we get many more guests of that position. And so I absolutely, we're absolutely open to having Catholic guests as we do want to help, uh, welcome them as well. Andrew Henry says, get Shabir and Daniel to debate, please. That would be juicy, although don't they agree for the most part? Uh, let me know what they would debate. And let's see here. 
Darth Horse says, James, say this water is, is it bussin? Is that the word? Is that what the young people are saying nowadays? Darth Whore is like 10 years younger than me. She's like very, you know, she's got way less. She's not as mature as me. It's true. Uh, so she, but she teaches me the, the slang. And Khalid says, Monterey Debates, what do you hope to accomplish by making debates? We want a couple of things. One, we want everybody to feel like they have been treated fairly. 100%, no doubt about it. We want everybody to have their fair shot. Because, hey, I used to be a debater, and sometimes I thought some channels weren't that fair. So we want to be as neutral as possible. That's one thing. The other thing is we want to discuss the big questions of life, because a lot of times people don't get that anymore. We want to bring people together from different walks of life, because... We don't think there's anything wrong with a channel where, let's say, it's just one person giving their viewpoint. But that's okay. I don't think I have anything. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But we see that among a lot of those podcasts like that, we're like, hey, we want to have discussions and debates where you have different people from different walks of life engaging each other still because things have become polarized today, and we want to still have people having conversations with one another. Zagros Ozkin says, James, I think I have a good idea that could be implemented to this channel and make it even more awesome. Can we have a five to 10 minute Zoom call, chat sometime to hear my proposal? I'm open to that. It's really busy right now. So give me time. But if you email me, uh, that's something that we can work on is that it's just really busy lately. I am behind on email. So I've got to let people know if you haven't heard back from me, hey, bear with me. It's just that everything's really, it's extra busy right now. Beast Militia or military says, do you think you could ever get Kyle against Steve McRae from the non sequitur show? I don't think we could. I don't think Kyle's going to be up for it. I don't know if Steve would either. I think it would be juicy to say the least, but I just don't know if it's going to happen. And then check proofs of Islam says, get Daniel Hikachu and Dillahunty to debate. We are working on doing that this summer. No joke. We're hoping to host them in person. Sly diggity dog. Thanks for coming by. I see you there in the old live chat. And let's see here. Gina says, what about doing debates now and then with historical or fictional characters from novels or movies and costumes? I think that would be fun. Possibly I'm open to it. We just have a lot, uh, a lot of requests lately, so I haven't really gotten to do a lot of the ideas that people put forth yet. But we are at 554 likes. We only need six more likes to get to 560 that's amazing. So will you be one of the six people that gets us to that next mark of 560 likes for the live stream? And then, what is it? Uh, let's see. Darth Whore, I may have responded to your message just because you're a punk, and I always like to put you in your place. But also, confirm Gennady says, hey, James, can you pronounce this in Danabole? That's my best guess. Principal Methods. Thanks for coming by. Says Delonte versus Daniel would be juicy, and it absolutely would. We are hoping to host that in person this summer. No guarantees. We haven't even mentioned it to the speakers yet. So that's something that I got to tell you uh, in context. That is not something that we know if it will for sure happen. We do want to, but it's something that, you know, hopefully we can. Lord willing, that's the goal. Zambi Sab Sabianus, thanks for coming by. We are glad that you were with us as I want to come and debate flat earthers. Maybe we're going to give that topic a little bit of a break for a while, but maybe in the future. Andrew Henry says, I'm pretty sure Daniel considers Shabir's opinions to be heretical because Shabir has more progressive interpretations of parts of Islam like hijab, apostasy, etc. So they could debate. Ah, okay. Good to know. Thanks for letting me know that. And so that's, it's a possibility. And then Alpha Phoenix says, dude, you're still live. Yes, we are. We are glad you were with us. King genius thanks for coming by and my dear friends thanks wilmar for being a channel supporter we appreciate you being a member of the channel and we've got to tell you we are excited about the future thank you guys for joining us our story is just beginning so join us while we are a small we are excited don't get me wrong 500 and or what is it 64,000 and 600 subscribers is huge. Don't get me wrong. We are excited about that. But I've got to tell you, my dear friends, our story is just beginning. We have big plans for the future. We are excited about the future, and we're going to be doing bigger and better things in the future. So I encourage you, join us while we're small. Hit that subscribe button because we're doing big things. And we want to say thanks for all of your support, my dear friends, as well as we want to let you know, we are absolutely determined to carry out the vision of providing a neutral platform so that everybody can make their case on a level playing field as we get people from different walks of life talking about 
the big questions of life. So thanks, everybody. I love you guys, and I'll see you tonight as we have this amazing debate tonight. You don't want to miss it. For the first time ever, Destiny and Gavin McGinnis collide. It is going to be a monster debate tonight, my dear friends. So we'll see you there for that one. Thanks for your support. Brooke Sparrow, Sparrow in the old live chat says, hit that subscribe button, and I couldn't agree more, Brooke. Thanks, everybody, and excited to see you soon. Thanks, everybody. I love you guys. You guys make this fun, whether you be atheist, Christian, Muslim. Yeah. Whether you be atheist, Christian, Muslim, we are glad you were here. I love you guys. Thanks for making this fun. And we're excited about the future. See you soon. In fact, see you tonight for this big, juicy debate on the bottom right of your screen.